This is uh, part two of the homework video guide. And for part two of this homework video guide, we will now start off with the uh, systems of equations problems. And for question number three, we need to determine for each order pair. So order pair is really the coordinates, x comma y. And it turns out we have one, two, three, four order pairs. And we, got, we need to figure out which of these order pairs is a solution to this system of equations right here highlighted in green. Okay, now I've kind of worked through this problem already, and I want to say that uh, the answer that works is the last option here, which is negative 1, comma 2. So negative 1 is your x value, and 2 is your y value. Okay, so what's going to happen here is anytime we see an x, there's an x there and an x there, all those x's will uh, be substituted with the value of negative 1. And all these y values, uh, they'll be substituted with, uh, with positive 2. So all the x values will be replaced with negative 1, and all the y values will be replaced with 2, and we just need to confirm that the left-hand side equals to the right-hand side. Okay, so if I bring uh, equation number 1 over, uh, we have a 2 there, and the x value here is going to be negative 1, minus 3, and the y value is going to be positive 2, and we need to verify if the left-hand side equals to the right-hand side, which is negative 8. Okay, well, 2 times uh, negative 1 is negative 2, and uh, negative 3 times uh, 2 is going to be negative 6. And it turns out that uh, negative 8 on the, on, we have negative 8 on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, we also have negative 8. So that definitely works for the first equation. Uh, but you also have to verify that it works for the second equation. Right? It's not valid if, you, if it works for only one of the equations. It must work for both of the equations. Okay, so testing this coordinate. This order pair on the second equation here, I have 9 bracket negative 1 plus 2 times positive 2, and we need to verify if that equals to negative 5 on the right-hand side. Okay, so this is negative 9 plus 4, and we need to verify if that equals to negative 5, and we do have negative 5 equals to negative 5. So therefore, this is definitely a solution. Okay, and if you test the other order pairs, you'll notice that you'll have a result where the left-hand side does not equal to the right-hand side, and then you can pretty much uh, stop and then move on. So for example, if I just tested this coordinate, zero, this order pair, 0 comma negative 4 onto the very first equation, you'd have 2 times 0 minus 3 times negative 4, and does that equal to negative 8? And clearly that's going to be no because we have a negative 12 there, right? So 0 minus 12, does that equal to negative 8? It does not, right? So we know that that's not going to work. So this whole question is designed for you to kind of test all the order pairs and see if the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. And it's really the last order pair that works. Okay, let's move on to the next one here. So a few more vocabulary questions here. Here are three systems of equations. Three systems. So here's the first one, the second one, and here's the third one. And we got to find the solution for each. Okay, so uh, for this very first system here, it turns out that both of these lines, line two and line one, they're parallel, so they never intersect. So there's no solution in this particular example, and we can verify that we have the same slopes, right? If you have the same slopes, uh, you'll have parallel lines. Uh, in the second system here, it turns out that they do intersect at the order pair of zero comma negative two. So there is a solution, and the solution is 0, comma, negative 2, all right? And for the third case, um, it's hard to see, but it turns out there's only one line, and that probably means that the second line is probably the identical line that's graphed on top of it. So it turns out that this is one of those infinite solution cases where both equations are exactly the same. And we can verify that algebraically. So if I take a look at the blue equation here, the blue equation, if I rewrite it, is 3x plus 2y equals to 2. And if I take this 3x, which is positive, if I move it to the other side, I get negative 3x plus the 2. And then I can divide both sides by the coefficient of 2 here. And if we, and if we simplify now, I get y on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, I have this negative 3 and the 2. And you can rewrite that as the negative sign in front, 3 over 2. And then we have the x plus, and then 2 divided by 2 is 1. And it turns out that this green box here is exactly the same thing as line 1, right? The equations are exactly the same, and that's why the two lines intersect um, at the exact same coordinates. And you have infinite solutions because um, they're basically intersecting everywhere. 
Okay, so move on to a few more questions here. Solve the system equations by graphing. Uh, that's not a problem here. Okay, so let's start off with uh, this equation right here. This is definitely in the form y equals to mx plus b. So this is where you probably want to start at negative 2. This is your uh, y-intercept. So your uh, y-intercept is negative 2, which is right there. So uh, let's start right there. And then for the slope, um, I just find with the slope, uh, you know, I, I have this negative 1 third. This whole blue thing is the slope. It's negative one third, right? So m equals to negative one third. That's the slope. Now I tell my students to always go up by the numerator first. So we go up one. And because we have a negative sign and a three, that means we go left three. Okay, so we always go up up first and we go left or right depending on whether it's a positive or a negative slope. So since it's a negative, we'll go uh, left three. Okay, so so from this y-intercept of negative 2, we want to go up 1 and left 3. So there's a point there. So up 1 and left 3. Up 1 and left, up 1 and left 3. Up 1 and left 3. And then once we run out of space, we go back to the beginning of the y-intercept and we go down 1, right 3, right? So down 1, right 3, down 1, right 3. And uh, this right here is our linear line. So that's our first, that is our first, um, equation their graph because it's in the form of y equals mx plus b. Okay, let's erase that. Okay, now let's take a look at uh, this equation right here. We need to write this in terms of y equals mx plus b. So the 3y remains, and then I have a positive x. If I move that to the other side, it becomes negative x, and then this negative 6 just tags along like that. Then we need to divide by the coefficient of 3 here. Okay. And it turns out this 3 and that 3, they cancel off. I get y equals. Now, you got to be very good at writing this negative and this 3 on the denominator. If you want to write that as a proper slope, put the negative sign in front. There's an invisible 1 there, right? So it's really 1 over 3 x on the side. And then just do this calculation. Negative 6 divided by 3 is negative 2. Okay. Um, so it turns out that uh, it's exactly the same equation as that, right? So uh, it turns out that we have infinite solutions because we're graphing the same line. All right, so this is one of those cases where you have infinite solutions and we're not going to graph the line because we already did. Okay, so move on to a question where hopefully we have um, uh, a different answer here. So, uh, so when you solve this system of equations by substitution, right? So in this spiral, we want to make sure you go with the substitution steps. Okay, so I'm going to recopy this line right here, just right below. So uh, y equals to 5x plus 29. So the slope is 5 and the y-intercept is 29. Okay, now I'm going to highlight this y right there. All right, we're going to change this. We're going to substitute this y with something else. So this is equation 1 and this is equation 2. If you look at equation number 2, this y is equal to that, right? And that y is equal to 8x plus 11. So what we can do here is we can raise this green y and we can replace it with this y, which is equal to that. So I can put an 8x plus 11 on the left-hand side. All right, so we're taking this, uh, equation 2 and plugging into equation number 1. Okay, let's do this step by step. So we have 5x. If I bring, it, it's positive 5x. If I bring the positive 5x to the left-hand side, it becomes negative 5x. Okay, so if I bring that positive 5x to the left-hand side, it becomes negative 5x. And then if I take a look at this positive 11, if I bring that to the other side now, if I bring that positive uh, 11 to the other side, uh, since it's positive, it becomes negative 11. Okay, and now we're now we got all the x's on one side and all the uh, um, numbers on the other side. So 8x minus 5x is going to be 3x on the left-hand side. Okay, and 29 minus 11 is going to be, uh, I guess it's going to be, um, I believe it's just going to be 18, right? So uh, if I do 29 minus 10 is 19, yeah, it's gonna, it should be 18, yeah. And then we divide both sides by 3, those 3 cancels. And then x would equal to 6. So 6 is your uh, answer for x. Now, it's not enough to stop here. You actually have to go back and find y and write your answer as your ordered pair. Okay, so if I go back to the original equations here, it doesn't matter which equation you use. Um, I'm just going to use this second one here. But once again, it doesn't matter what equation you use. So I have y equals to 8x plus 11. We just found out that x was equal to 6. 
right? So I, I take my six and I'm gonna plug it in for the X there. So Y equals to eight bracket uh, six plus 11. Okay, so Y would equal to 48 plus 11 and that equals to 59. Okay, so the way you the way you write your answer is like is an order pair here, right? So your x value was six and your y value was fifty nine. So you want to write your answer as an order pair. Okay, so the graphs will intersect at the point six comma fifty nine. Okay, let's move on to the next one here. Uh, solve the system equations by substitution here. Okay, so I have equation one and I have equation two. Now, by just examining this, equation number two looks easier because one of the y variables is isolated. So if I work with equation number two, I'm going to take this negative 2x and I'm going to bring that to the other side. I'm going to bring that negative 2x to the right side. If I do that, I get positive 2x, and then, and then the minus 1 just tags along. So now this is my new equation two. Okay. Now we're going to take equation number two, and we're going to substitute that back into equation number one. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite equation number one over here as 5x plus 2y equals to 16. And this y right here is equivalent to that y right there. So if I use my substitution step, I'm plugging 2 into equation number one. Then I'm, instead of writing y, I'm going to write this equation right here, which is 2x minus 1. And that's going to equal to 16. Okay, so there's your substitution step, and now you have a bunch of algebra steps to work out. So you have a 5x, and then we'll just distribute the brackets here. So positive 4x, and 2 times negative 1 is going to be negative 2, and that's going to equal to 16. Okay, and then we've got to collect like terms. 5x plus 4x is going to be 9x. And then we have the minus 2 uh, equals to the 16. Okay, so 9x would equal 2. I take this negative 2 and move it over. 16 plus 2 is going to be 18. Divide both sides by 9, and x would be equal to 2, right? So 18 divided by 9 is 2. So x equals to 2. Now, once you have your x value of 2, you want to go back to the original problem. And it really doesn't matter what equation you use. You can use the first one or the second one. Um, I'm going to just work with the second one because the second one looks easier to me. Right, and once again, what was x equal to? Well, x was equal to positive 2. So we're going to plug in that 2 over here. So negative 2 times 2, and then plus the y equals to negative 1. Okay, if I multiply those two terms together, negative 2 times 2 is negative 4, and then plus the y equals to negative 1. And then if I want to bring this negative 4 to the right hand side, it would be negative 1 plus 4, and it turns out that y would equal to positive 3. Okay, so it's not enough to uh, write your answer like that. You have to write your answer as an ordered pair. So the 2 goes there and the 3 goes there. So there's your ordered pair answer, 2, comma, 3. The two graphs intersect at the point 2, comma, 3. Okay, let's so move on to this word problem here. So I believe uh, this question uh, may have been covered already in one of the problems uh, in class. So at a baseball game, a vendor sold a combination of uh, 135 sodas and hot dogs. So in total, uh, uh, sodas... If sodas is S and hot dogs are H, so S plus H equals to 135, all right? So a, a combined, right? So combined, we add them. The number of sodas sold was twice the number of hot dogs sold. Okay, so you need to write up a system equations where um, we'll say that we'll let um, S be the number of sodas being sold. And then we'll let H be the number of hot dogs sold. Okay, so your first equation, as mentioned, is S plus H combined. If we sell sodas and hot dogs for that day, we have 135 total sales, right? And then it says uh, the number of sodas was twice the number of hot dogs sold, all right? So uh, if I give you sodas equals to hot dogs, this means the number of sodas and hot dogs are the same. So if I sell five sodas, that means I sell five hot dogs. But the question is saying that we sell twice as many sodas. A common, is, a common mistake is students put the two with the S because it says twice as many sodas. But the two is actually supposed to be over here. Okay, and a very easy way to verify that if you sell 20 hot dogs, 
20 hot dogs, 20 times 2 means you have 40 sodas, right? So it's a very nice easy way you can verify that by using a number for hot dogs, multiplying by 2, which verifies that sodas is double the amount of hot dogs. So th that is your equation right there, S equals to 2H. So this is equation number 1, and this is equation number 2. Now, equation number two looks easier because S has been isolated already, S equals to 2H. So if I rewrite equation number one here, S plus H equals to 135, we're going to substitute this H with this 2H. Sorry, we're going to substitute this S with 2H. Okay, so if we do that, let's just erase this now. Instead of writing uh, S, we'll write 2H. All right. And 2H plus H is going to be 3H equals to 135. And then we can divide both sides by 3, divide both sides by 3. Uh, sometimes this is a little bit of work here. So uh, if I do 3, div uh, divide that into 135, I guess that will be um, 4, 12, 1, 5. So 45, right? So H would equal to 45 hot dogs. Uh, and since sodas is double that, uh, 45 times 2 is going to be 90. And um, if I add these together, uh, 45 plus 90, that does give you 135 combined sales. All right, so there's your word problem of the day. Okay, let's move on to some trigonometry here. Uh, whenever you have trigonometry problems, I would start off by writing the acronym SOKATOA at the top. And then after that, I will label your diagram with respects to the angle. Now here's your angle, right? Um, if, with respect to this angle, this right here is your hypotenuse. And since the X is right next to the 51 degrees, this is your adjacent, right? The adjacent is the, the side that's right next to the angle. Okay, so I have an H and an A. So if I look at my, um, my acronyms here at the top, so Katoa, which one has an A and an H? Well, it's the, the coast, right? So SOKATOA, right? A and H. So if I use uh, this, this acronym right here, CA, the way we write that is COS of the angle is your adjacent divided by your hypotenuse. Okay. It turns out that our angle here is uh, 51 degrees, right? So if I rewrite this, this is COS of 51 degrees. And that's going to equal to the adjacent. Well, the adjacent is just x, right? So x is on the top, and the hypotenuse is 12. And you just need to solve for uh, that x variable right there. So this is very similar to the mathematical equation of, let's just say we have a 3 there, and I have a 6 there divided by 2. I think most students can agree that 3 equals to 6 over 2. Now there's a 12 There's a twelve here, right, on the bottom, and there's a 2 there. So in order to move this 2, you just multiply it with the 3, right? So 3 times 2 equals to 6. So I'm going to move the 12 with the cos 51. So cos 51, this is just like a number that we've been practicing uh, throughout the spirals. And we multiply that by 12, and that will equal to x. Okay. And then from here, uh, you just want to go a calculator and you want to go roughly two to three decimal places, maybe just two decimal places, and you get 7.55. So on your calculator, uh, this is what it will look like. So on my calculator, I have it like this, uh, cos 51 times 12, and I get 7.551 or 7.552. Uh, so if I want to put this extra two here, I can do that. Okay, so uh, for these kind of questions, you definitely want to jump to a calculator to finish off the uh, answers there. Okay, now you solve for A and B on the next question here. So I'm going to erase this, and I will write out the acronym SOKATOA at the top. After that, you want to identify your angle, which is 46 degrees, and you want to label your diagram with respect to this angle here, right? So this right here is your hypotenuse. And your B, as mentioned in the previous question, is your adjacent. So let's just try to find B first. Let's try to find B first. So since I have my adjacent and my hypotenuse, I'm using the cos function again, right? So adjacent and the hypotenuse. So just like the previous question, I write cos theta equals to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Okay, And the angle here, right? so this is always the angle. So the angle here is, is 46 degrees. And that's going to equal to my adjacent. Now my adjacent is going to be letter B this time, and my hypotenuse is going to be 27. And just like the previous question, since 27 is on the bottom, we can multiply that with cos 46. Okay, so I write down cos 
and then 46 degrees, and then I'll put that in brackets because that's one number, and we're times that by 27 to get B. Okay, and then you just want your calculator here. So if I erase this, I write cos, uh, what's the angle gain? 47, cos 47 times, and then um, uh, times 27, I guess. Times 27. Okay, and we get uh, 18 point, uh, 18.414. Okay, so there's your B value right there. Okay, so going back to my diagram here, I guess I can write uh, 18.414. Okay. Okay, let me just erase that because we just found B, and now we're gonna find A now. Okay, so it turns out that this right here, the 27 is your hypotenuse. I always use the numbers given to me in the problem, and then with respect to the angle of 46 degrees, this is your opposite, right? So now we need the opposite and the hypotenuse, and that's the sine function right here. So, right? So I write sine of the angle equals to the opposite, right? Opposite comes first divided by your hypotenuse. Okay, my angle here is 46 degrees, and my opposite here is going to be A, but my hypotenuse is 27. Okay? Just like the previous question, we just take your 27, we multiply it with sine 46. So sine 46 is just one number, and we times that by 27, and that would equal to A. Okay, and then from there, you do want to go to a calculator again. So, uh, so I'm clear that. So uh, sine 46, and times by, uh, it was 27, wasn't it? times sine 46 times 27 times 27 and then we get uh, 19.422 uh, so we get 19.422 equals to a okay so I believe that was the answer. let's move on to question number 11 now and for question number 11 I need to solve for the angle in this problem so uh, once you have your angle, let's go ahead and label the triangle here. So this five is right next to the angle, so we call that the adjacent. And uh, if I look at my 90 degree box and go right across, this is your hypotenuse. Okay, so I have my hypotenuse and my adjacent, so that's gonna be my cos uh, function there. So cos takes your adjacent, your hypotenuse. So we will write down cos of the angle equals to the adjacent over your hypotenuse, okay? And uh, since we're looking for the angle, I can leave my angle uh, as a blank there, so cos theta, and my adjacent now is gonna be five, and my hypotenuse is gonna be 13. And then from here on, you wanna go to your calculator there to solve for the angle. So uh, the function that allows you to get solve for the angle is the inverse cos, so cos to the power of negative one. And then in brackets, you put five over 13, okay? And then you go to your calculator and just get the answer there. So if I'm using my, my calculator here, this is what it will look like. So let me clear this off. So I do a second and then a cos to get that minus one sign. And then we just type in five divided by 13. And then close the bracket, hit enter, and I get 67.38 degrees. Okay. Uh, after that, let's, uh, let's put the answer in there is, uh, I forgot the answer already, it was, uh, So it'll be 67.380 degrees. Okay, so that's it for that particular question. Let's move on to question number 12, the last one here. So uh, I gotta solve for x. So x is an angle because it's inside the triangle. Okay, so um, I'm kind of erase this here and let's just figure out what we can do here. So katoa. Okay, so this right here is your opposite. And when you're 90 degree box across from that, that's your hypotenuse, right? So uh, O and the H, so we're using so. So sine of the angle equals to your opposite over your hypotenuse. Okay, and we're just solving for X here, which is the angle. So uh, it's gonna be sine of X 
equals the opposite, which is six over 13. And then X would equal to uh, sine inverse of six over 13. And then we can just jump to our final answer there. Okay, so going to my calculator now, if I clear this, I hit second sign, and we need six divided by 13, and uh, your final answer should be 27.486 degrees. Okay, so that concludes this homework video guide.